is the topic for today. Uh, as business controllers and financial controllers, the key topics for us in everyday life are, number one, precision in the data that we are transmitting around and efficiency for making it fast to produce the data and information that we want to share with the other people. So for that purpose, I believe this Thinkcell is a very, very good and uh, handy tool or an add-in for our daily life uh, inclusion. So Thinkcell basically is uh, Excel and PowerPoint at in sell it on your PC. You will see it in Excel on insert tab. There you can see the things are in the first part. There are charts and some more options over there. You can also see in Excel in the formulas part where rounding method is available. And then you can also see in the PowerPoint, there is a, the insert uh, on the ribbon and you can see over there the, some elements. So uh, let me briefly introduce you about the Thinkcell add-in. It is basically uh, having three parts. Number one is the rounding method, which is precisely for the precision in the data transmission. Uh, number two is the charts, and number three is the layouts. Charts are basically a combination of Excel and PowerPoint workarounds, and layout is specifically built up for the PowerPoint working. So I'll go through one by one all three features of Thinkcell to briefly explain what it is. So first one is Think Cell Round. For this purpose, I will quickly go um, in one of the Excel that I have just as a test kind of working around for me. So I have some test data. I will copy and paste it over here. And now I will go for rounding this data. So I will use for the first part, I will use the rounding feature that you have in the format feature of Excel. So normally, everyday life, we use it like this. So we have it rounded now. But if we go and check this, for example, this one, this rounded data. So for example, for example, number 11, 12, 14, it is 4 plus 15 plus 21. So Excel is showing us 41, whereby it should be 40 if we calculate the rounded data, which is apparently incorrect. Let's go for another try. The next one, 11 plus 8 plus 4. So if we sum it up, it shows 23. So the rounding sounds to be a bit tricky. Let's go to the next part. What I will do is I will take another sample, the same data, and this time I will use the round formula. Most of you must be aware of this. I will choose this, comma, zero. Zero means that the minimum rounding. And then I will copy and paste it over here. So you can see it. <clears throat> and similarly, I'll drag it down. So there you go. Now, if you compare both these, we have some difference of information, which ideally shouldn't be there. So what we are looking for over here is precision. So let us use this uh, thing cell now to make it more precise. So what I'll do is I will select the data, I will go to the formula tab and there you see this rounding flexibility. So I will click it and now it is rounded. So let's test this now in our calculator. Let's see what is the result over here for our thing cell. So the first row. 4 plus 15 plus 22. There you go, 41. Let's make another test. 10 plus 8 plus 4. It's 22. Perfect. So, one thing is clear that if we go for a huge data calculation and huge data transmission, this, this is going to be a very good help for us to make it more precise and accurate in our rounding. So this was just a, just a test for, for, for showing how the rounding works for us. The next one is the thing cell charts. So 
With the help of this PowerPoint add-on, we can make some very complex waterfalls, macros, and Gantt charts very easily. And the other benefit of this chart is that these charts are, are really very handy to make them. But the next question that I would, I would be as a business user asking that why should I use Pinksel? Because these charts are easily available and makeable in Excel and PowerPoint. Correct. But the problem here is that we cannot connect the Excel and PowerPoint that easily the way the things are can. So connection means that we have some charts which are based on data in Excel and those are automatically updated in PowerPoint. So just imagine you have an Excel sheet containing hundreds of um, charts which are updated on probably weekly or monthly or probably 15 day basis. So for those, you have another PowerPoint which is connected to those uh, graphics and what you are doing every month or every every week is you are copying all the charts from your Excel to the PowerPoint so just imagine 100 slides of a PowerPoint you are formatting you are editing and you are copying and pasting just for no reason it's not value addition it's just a copy based work so just to avoid that we could use things up I will give you a quick demonstration how and how efficiently you can do that so I have the same Excel with some information which is for example I've taken periodic sales cost and cash so uh, for example if we have to present this data to uh, in, in some PowerPoint so what we will do is we will simply go to insert and then we have already selected this data we'll go to insert and we'll select charts for example I will I would like to have the cluster charts for this there are a lot of other samples as well which uh, due to the time shorter I cannot show everything but quickly let me show you a sample of it so the moment I will click this clusters there is a, a square if you can see which is asking me to share this on the PowerPoint so I've taken one uh, sample slide over here test area for you guys to just explain it so I will click over here so now what thing cell is doing is it's getting the data in the charts over here so we have a chart over here by the way you can see the sales cost and cash legends over here and the data over here very good so you can change different color schemes over here for example this one and you can also go for the automation of this this chart so now comes the real question what is the difference that we have over here so if we click right click over here you can see different options connectivity with actual and some different other things. Let me quickly show you some of the features over here, like add category difference. So this is showing the category difference over here, the category difference between two categories. So what is the difference amount? There's a ball over here. You can see you can pull that ball to another category, and this will show you the difference about among the other categories. So you can see it is pretty much live over here, and you can play with the with, with the format of the chart. You can add or remove the categories you can see the categories are down there the periods you can see over here and similarly it's it's it's, it's pretty handy so now we are talking about connectivity with excel we had an excel data so what we are going to do is we are going to go to more and then click so there you see the data link this is the link between the excel that we were working in from where we copied the data or connected the data so what I'll do is I will make click the auto ready button over here auto means that this will be automatically linked to the Excel so for example if I remove some information for example I remove cash from this Excel you can see automatically the cash is zero now it is removed and similarly if I put the data again it is again populated so just imagine your hundred slides your hundred graphs are automatically connected with your Excel so just you have to do is to update every month or every week your Excel sheet and PowerPoint will automatically show this all information it's, it's really handy if, if you're working on multiple Excel's multiple uh, kind of PowerPoints and it's very handy to connect all the Excel's in, in one PowerPoint so for the presentation and for data precision I must say this is one of the best tools that I've ever seen so then let's go to the third part over here which is related to the layouts as I mentioned layouts is only specifically for the PowerPoint and it is for the quick composing of, of the layout of the slides just let me quickly give you an example by the way all the slides that you have seen in yellow up mark 
these are made with Excel prompt already. So let's quickly go uh, to the sample Excel that I prepared for you guys over here just to explain how this works, the layout stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to see there are some just a sample uh, PowerPoint which contains January, February, March, April and some one half information uh, of the year that this is some information over there. So what we want to do is we want to create a kind of table of contents that we will be presenting. So simply we'll go to insert there we have some elements over here. So in PowerPoint, you can see the chapter and the table of contents and the details. So we'll quickly go to the chapter. There you go. So the chapter in the first part in the agenda, we have January. So what I've selected is January. Then I went down. Then we have February. I will again go to the elements and plug it in here. So instead of asking for the next chapter, it is also including the previous chapter you can see. So we have February over here. Similarly, we go to the March. We will select again the chapter and March over here, you can see. So just to explain how it works, if I present this presentation, uh, there you go. So we have January, February, and March. We see the January information. Then you see the February is highlighted. Then we see the February information and then March is highlighted. So you see the agenda is automatically populated over here. So you don't have to copy and paste a lot of slides over here. You just need to insert, 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 and you just carry on inserting all the information. It is very handy for the long slides and the long presentations with long agendas to keep track of the agenda plus making the slides very quickly. Uh, that is it, a quick introduction from my side.